Peace and blessings, YouTube. Fierce ESG Diva here, back with another update video. And actually, I owe you all two update videos. So you're going to get the videos for my month two and my month three post-op ESG. This one right here is geared toward the month two post-op ESG. So if you want to know how I did in my month two after ESG, stay tuned. Hey y'all, let's get right into this post-op month two video, okay? So first and foremost, if you're not following me on Instagram, you really need to be following me on Instagram. I am so much more active on Instagram. I post daily and sometimes several times a day. So you want to follow me on Instagram if you want updates in between the YouTube videos that I'm able to do. My Instagram name is Fierce ESG Diva, but there are periods between the Fierce and the ESG and the Diva. So so I'll put it in the description box below, but please, please follow me on there. And thank you so much to those that have followed me on there and told me that, if, that they found me on YouTube. I really, really appreciate it. Also, you can like, comment, and subscribe as well. And that way you'll stay abreast whenever I do post a video. All right. So because I am past the two month mark, I'm actually already past the three month mark and going into month four, I had to do a little backtracking in order to remember what all went down in month two. But I thought it was really, really important to separate the videos from uh, months one, months two, and months three, especially for those that are watching and kind of wanting to know, okay, you know, how did you handle each month instead of just coming back at you with a video that has a bunch of months all together. So I did take some notes. I went back through my Instagram from October 19th, um, September 19th through October 19th. I went back through my Instagram posts and then I also went back through my fitness journal and through my um, post-op uh, nutrition visits and my doctor follow-up for those for that um, time span so that I, I could give you all kind of a good um, overall view of how I did that month. So, my ESG was on August 19th, which means that my second month post-op started September 19th, between September 19th and October 19th. And the biggest thing that happened or the biggest change that happened during that time was the fact that I was cleared for a regular diet. So with my doctor, after you have hit a uh, week eight, Starting week eight, you are pretty much cleared for a regular diet without restriction. Of course, you are, you know, to, to practice good eating habits and all of that and to, you know, try to prioritize your protein and your vegetables. Um, but there's really nothing, there's no ban on what I can and cannot eat. You have to remember that this procedure is different from like gastric bi bypass or even vertical sleeve where some of those patients may experience that dumping syndrome when they eat maybe things that are high in fat or sugar. A lot of the times ESG recipients do not, re do not actually have that, um, that syndrome or not, you know, really um, prone to that syndrome. Some may be, but for the most part, that's more of a bypass and a VSG um, issue. So I was cleared for a regular diet uh, from week eight on, and my week eight started October 7th. So let's get into a little weight loss. So on September 19th, I weighed 253.8 pounds, and that was September 19th. On October 19th, exactly one month later, I weighed 239.4 pounds. That is a total loss in my month two of 14.4 pounds. And since ESG, which was August 19th, I lost 30 pounds total from months one and month two of ESG. Okay. Now I did take measurements and I did post my measurements on my Instagram uh, uh, page and also in the in my highlights. I have a highlight that's called progress and you can go through there and see my measurements. But I'm, I'm not really going to go over the measurements, but just be, let it be known that I did lose a lot of inches all over. 
the places that I noticed it the most would be in my waist. I measure two places in my waist. I measure um, the smallest part of the waist that you're supposed to, but also because I carry weight in my stomach, I measure right across my belly button because that seems to be where the weight likes to settle. And so I did notice that in both of those spots, I lost anywhere from three to four inches in those two places. Um, individually that's not combined so three inches at the top of my waist or the smallest part and like three inches around my belly button so I'm really starting to notice the weight loss more so in my waist and I'm also starting to notice it in my face and my jawline as I said I am three months um, going into month four right now as I record this video but if you go back to some of my Instagram posts and kind of look through you'll probably start to notice too that my face is starting to become its natural shape which is actually oval my face wasn't round it was oh well the weight did that right so that's my natural face shape so I am starting to notice it there and I'm overall feeling a lot better like I'm starting to feel really pretty good so that's kind of the weight loss update as far as my nutrition as I said I was cleared for a regular diet and so when I met with my nutritionist October 7th was when I was cleared for a regular diet and she upped my macros and my calories quite a bit and she did that because she based it on my activity level, my age, um, and of course my weight and the goals that I have set for myself. So from we'll say the first or we'll say the no the latter part of September like about September 19th through the end of um, September or so I was usually averaging about 800 to 900 calories my macros were um, 60 grams of protein about 80 grams of carbs and uh, 40 uh, grams of fat or less. That's the macros that I had been adhering to. And I've been adhering to those macros since I um, had the ESG, pretty much since I was cleared off of um, clear liquids, I was sticking to those macros. And it was hard to hit the carb count on that one with 80 grams of carbs, but I was pretty much consistent on my 60 grams of protein. If you um, know anything about protein shakes, most of the protein shakes that um, are recommended are 30 grams in one protein shake. So, you know, it was easy. If I drank one protein shake that day, anything else that I ate with protein would go ahead and push me over. So I was doing really good with the 800 to 900 uh, grams of protein. How, uh, sorry, 800 to 900 calories. However, when I was cleared for the regular diet on October 7th, she upped everything and y'all are not going to believe this. Okay. Well, maybe you are if you already <laughs> follow me on Instagram, but she wanted me to hit 90 grams of protein a day, uh, stay under 40 grams of fat and get this 120 carbs a day. I panicked a little bit. I did because, you know, we've been taught that carbs are the enemy. That That's what we've been taught, right? So 120 carbs just seemed like this ungodly amount of carbs that I would never hit. And to remind you, I was barely hitting 80. So I didn't know how I was going to be able to hit 120 carbs. She told me not to worry that I would work myself up to those macros. And if you put those macros in any calculator, I use my fitness pal. And if you put those macros into my fitness pal, it tells you that that's about a, a 1200 calories a day so I went from 800 to 900 to jump up to hit about 1200 or less calories a day it took me a while to get to that and um, the reasoning behind that was because of my activity level which I'm about to talk about to talk about next so she wanted to make sure that I had enough energy and was ha and had enough um, you know carbs and things like that in order to maintain my activity level so I could continue to work out the way that I was working out so it took me a while to get to that um, calorie range even now I don't hit the 1200 um, carbs, uh, sorry, 1200 calories all the time. I don't hit the 120 carbs almost ever. And it is total carbs. It's not net carbs. It's total carbs. And so I barely hit that. One thing that I am consistently over on that I struggle with with the nutrition is fat. 
I struggle with that fat. I am typically over my fat and that may be um, only five grams over. Sometimes it's 15 grams over. I am typically over my fat and I think a lot of it is because um, I like cheese and I like the full fat cheese. I'll eat less of it but I want the full fat cheese and, um, and if you think about it even things like an egg has I want to say five grams of fat in it just one egg even though it's the good fat. So I I try to watch that, but honestly, I'm not overly strict on myself when it comes to my fat as long as my overall cal uh, caloric intake and uh, my other macros are pretty much on point. I don't really worry too much about the fat. So I mentioned that the reason why she um, upped my macro so much was because of my activity level. I have been consistently active since August 1st, since about three weeks before my uh, ESG. I set those goals for myself to be active because I know that I struggle so much with exercise. It is so easy for me not to exercise. I don't feel guilty about it or anything. So that has been really my struggle is the exercise. I, I was never everyone that had an issue with eating per se. I could eat well when I chose to eat well and do it for a, de a, a um, decent amount of time. But it's just that activity level that I could not um, stay consistent with. And for my body, for as many years as I tried to really lose weight, I know that I have to do both. I am not a person that can only really eat well and you know, get down to the amount of weight or a healthy weight that I want. My body requires that I do both. I have to be active. So during that time um, from September 19th to September to October 19th, and actually in the month of September to begin with, I started um, really trying to up my activity level. I was doing uh, 75 squats through about three days a week, I was um, lifting small weights, about five pound weights. I started with three pounds in August and then I moved to September to five pounds, mostly in the arms, trying to, you know, kind of tone up um, biceps and triceps and all of that. And so I started lifting a, a small weights from that, just kind of dumbbells. I started um, upping my walking. I would make sure that every time I walked, I'd walk for at least 35 to 40 minutes. And it would be about two and a half miles in walking. And that was usually four or five times a week as well. And then I also kind of supplemented a little bit with uh, Beachbody's Turbo Fire. That's Shalene Johnson is the, or Shalene Johnson, that's the um, trainer for that one. I would do a little bit of Turbo Fire as well. That Turbo Fire is tough though, so I, um, I didn't do it a whole lot, but every now and then I try to at least add that if I wasn't going to go walk. So that's kind of what I was doing with my activity level. And whenever I would do those things, I was burning at least, you know, four or 500 calories for each workout, which means I'm burning a lot when it comes to a weekly. So she wanted to, my nutritionist wanted to make sure that I had enough energy to sustain that. She said it seemed like my energy levels were good, but she just wanted to double check um, within there. Also with that nutrition and that activity, I also started um, with a vitamin patch. I've been taking the vitamin patch since about two or three weeks post-op. I have a vitamin D3, a biotin patch, a calcium patch, and then uh, just a regular multivitamin patch. And they are transdermal patches, so I put them on um, anywhere it says without, you know, hair um, in that area. Typically, I like to put them around, um, kind of around where my bra straps go in the front. Um, you may be able to, wait, which side? No, not that one. Can you see that? You can move down a little bit. Okay, do you see that one right there? That's kind of what they look like. So I typically kind of put them on there, and they do stay on, and you're supposed to keep them on for about uh, eight hours. So I try to make sure I put them on in the morning, or at some point I put them on so I know I'll have them on. And sometimes I even sleep in them, especially if I, if I forget, you know, to take them off, or if I worked out early that morning, took a shower, and then put them on, then I'll, um, then sometimes I'll just sleep in them. So I have been using those. I think those have helped with my uh, with the energy levels as well. I have not had any blood work done. We had talked about doing some blood work within a month too, just to make sure that I was getting all the nutrients that I needed. However, since um, when just speaking with her, she said, you don't seem like you have your, your dragon at any point. So I'm sure they're probably working pretty well. So 
that's kind of nutrition and um, activity. During that transition, y'all, from the regular foods diet or from the, the soft foods to just a regular non-restricted diet, I have not had really, really any issues with anything that I have eaten. I have not had any um, aversions to um, foods. There's not any foods that I have run across that have upset my stomach any. I have not grown up. I have not um, become uh, overly nauseous. I have not um, had any real issues, no pain. I mean, nothing at all to the point where I kind of feel, you know, that I'm, I'm thinking it's typical, yes, but I know there are some people who've had ESG that are having some different types of experiences, and I can only speak to my truth, and y'all, it's been a very, very smooth transition for me. I'm, I'm grateful for it, because it really has been um, pretty smooth. So when I was talking to my doctor, when I first started, you know, talking about ESG, I wanted to know what were some major complications or issues that ESG patients may face. And two of them were dehydration and constipation. Okay. I have experienced um, definitely the constipation, but not an overt amount of constipation, no real pain or anything, but it may be, you know, sometimes I'll realize, hey, it's been about three days since I had a bowel movement. So I might need to do something about that. And what I've been doing is at first I was taking Miralax daily as I was instructed to do when I was, you know, first out of pre-op for like maybe the first four or five weeks I was supposed to take um, Miralax daily. Now, whenever I feel like I'm constipated, I'll do um, some Dulcolax. Dulcolax, the overnight pill has been the best, the, the gentlest on my stomach. I've tried the herbal, like a herbal laxative tea, and that gave me really, really bad stomach cramps and all that. So after that first, you know, tea incident, I didn't use that anymore. But the Dulcolax I've used at least twice, and it has really, really given me um, relief, overnight relief, no cramping, anything like that. But for the most part, I haven't been overly constipated. As long as I get my water in, I am trying to average 60 to 70 ounces of water a day. So as long as I get my water in, then I have not really been constipated. I also add it back in with the, with the, um, the regular diet, you can add back in your raw vegetables. Um, so I started, you know, back eating, you know, salads and um, steamed uh, like broccoli and steamed veg veggies and carrots and things like that. And those are fibrous foods. So that has also helped with my um, any constipation that I may get. But other than that, I really haven't had a lot of constipation. As far as dehydration goes, I have not experienced dehydration yet. I am pretty adamant on my water drinking. I start drinking water before I step foot out of the bed in the morning. I keep a tumbler on my nightstand and I've also advised a lot of uh, friends of mine that, hey, that you kind of have to start drinking time you wake up. And so I start drinking then. And then I am partial to IV hydration treatments. I have joined a... Um, an IV uh, membership at a place called IV Bars. It's IV and then B-A-R-S as in a drinking bar. And they have memberships where you can pay, you know, every month you pay on the membership and then you get a huge discounts on their cocktails is what they call them. I believe they have IV Bars. If you Google it, they have them kind of nationally. Of course, I'm outside of uh, Houston, so I go to one that's in the Houston Heights. And I'll usually get a thousand milliliter bag of hydration I've uh, that's about 33 um, uh, 33 ounces which is one liter so I typically get that it'll be um, the B complex so sometimes it'll be just the hydration with a B complex some vitamins in there the last time I did it I um, kind of mixed up some different cocktails and added in things like some um, glucosamine and you know maybe some vitamin C and things like that within there as well and so I think that has also helped me with my hydration where I don't get into a deficit if I don't drink for, you know, don't hit my hydration goals for a couple of days in a row. I still am pretty hydrated. I also don't drink anything other than water. 
Um, and let's see, water and uh, coffee. I have started drinking coffee. My nutritionist said it was fine for me to drink coffee in month two, by the way. She said it was fine for me to drink coffee. So I have, I do drink coffee. I try to drink it every, maybe a little bit every other day. We're talking about maybe six ounces or so of coffee tops, not a huge amount. And I mix it with a protein shake. Uh, so I get that protein in that coffee and it also tastes really good. So I like that. I'll do that. And then I'll just have basic water. I have started to use the little um, like the crystal light packets I think Starburst has some packets Country Time Lemonade the zero sugar packets that you can kind of pour and mix and shake into your water whenever I want some flavor but I've been okay with just water so that's pretty much all I'm drinking. I have not had any soda, anything carbonated, um, no alcohol, liquor, any of that type of stuff. The only thing that I've had are those two. And I'm not overly partial to milk, so I'm more so on protein shakes um, or vanilla protein. If I wanted to mix some, say, and have some cereal, I do a vanilla protein shake instead of, like, the milk. But I do have a, some milk around. I have the Fairlife milk. I just haven't really, I don't really drink a lot of milk to begin with. So that's kind of the issues, major complications that I, or any complications that I've had. Like I said, I'm sorry, it's not more eventful because I really haven't had any. As far as NSV, so during month two, I did have to make a new long-term goal. I try to make a goal of 5% of my body weight. So I calculate where I am and then do 5% of that. So every goal that I set, and you'll see them on my Instagram profile, every goal that I set for weight has is 5% of what my current body weight is. So I did have to do that. So that was a great NSV. Um, I got to go to a spa and have a cellulite massage, which was quite interesting. They do the areas that are prone to cellulite. So, you know, usually thighs and buttocks and things like that. I had a great cellulite massage and a facial. Um, I am in a clothing size or in month two, I did kind of go down a clothing size. I noticed that um, I was starting in maybe like size 20 or so. It seems like I was um, going down to about eight. 16 still a little wonky honestly I'm not quite sure what size I am since I've been wearing uh, nothing but workout clothes and yoga pants and all of that since I've been working at home since March I don't know what size I am in real clothes so I need to kind of try on some real clothes I guess whenever we get to go somewhere and go back outside I'll try on some real clothes and let you know what my sizes are for that but other than that, that's kind of my month two um, update. Month two was a really, really good month. I didn't have really any major issues. Again, you can follow me on Instagram, y'all, where I post daily. I also post short videos on Instagram where I um, just kind of talk about, you know, things that are going on currently. So maybe if I have forgotten something in this video, if you go back to my Instagram page and check my um, IGTV, it's typically called ESG Park Musings because usually I'm out outside walking at the park when I start to think of you know just random thoughts about weight loss and what's going on in general and I'll record a quick two to maybe five minute video on there so thank you so much for watching and y'all stay tuned to my next video where you will see me in this exact same outfit because it will be my month three post-op video y'all take care bye